So I guess um, my first question is going to be on, let's explain about what kind of uh, projects each of your organization is doing and what is your role on that particular digital transformation journey. So we'll start with Vivek. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I work for BC Ferries, which is uh, one of the largest um, ferry operator in, in the world, uh, uh, with 25 routes, 47 terminals, 37 ferries, like moving millions of people and the vehicles every year. Um, so it, it's a, the digital transformation is, uh, is something, the journey that we started in 2018. Um, and just to improve the customer experience while, while they are traveling, uh, they're booking the reservations. And um, also, uh, we get the more insight into the customer, uh, to know our customers and their patterns. Uh, so uh, looking at that um, uh, view, uh, we uh, take up the digital transformation projects uh, where we are replacing our booking system, introducing CRM, um, middleware, so our API, in, uh, announcing our website. And these are the different projects we took into, and uh, we're still on the journey. Uh, there's still mo more projects in the line um, to enhance the customer experience. So that's all uh, like uh, the piece of uh, work we are doing in the digital transformation. And I was um, fortunate to involve in as an integration lead in the earlier, and now working as a solution architect on these projects. Um, yeah, that's, that's a basically like the background yeah. on the, at the BC Ferries. Okay, and Cedric? Hi, hi. So my company is um, actually a banking provider. So what does it mean exactly? We work for the group uh, Credit Agricole in France and specifically for the private uh, banking uh, area. So our customer are the private bankings from the group Credit Agricole and we are hosting basically the information system for them and also for external um, customer around the world who are not part of the group itself. Regarding the digital transformation, um, as a um, bank institution, we, of course, uh, were running uh, the, S, the information system on the mainframes some years ago with uh, COBOL uh, programs and COBOL APIs. And, uh, of course, we had to, to, to renew, to, 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 to migrate all this um, um, all system to newer standards, so basically uh, evolving to uh, Java APIs and uh, proposing brand new uh, application, more, let's say, uh, Web 3.0, if you can say that, in order to, to propose like a really um, interesting experience to, to, the, to the bankers, which are finally the, 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 the end users. Um, so like new CRM, a new, a new API exposition also to third parties. So this is uh, basically the, the, um, how digital transformation occurred last, years, last two years. Okay. And now Shirwat. <laughs> All right. So I work with the Red Cross, International Red Cross. So uh, Red Cross is known for this humanitarian work. Well, the main mandate is to provide humanitarian protection for the people in uh, uh, war conflict zones and support them however we can. So we have around 20,000 people who are spread across 100 countries. Uh, applications are run uh, in the refugee camps to the war conflicts area. Uh, the transformation for us started back in, uh, during the COVID era when we realized that we couldn't continue working the same way we could. Uh, since being a 100-year-old organization, we had to redo a lot of things. We have a large number of legacy systems which we started to modernize and simplify. We are still in the process of it. We are trying to do a bit of a restructuring, uh, creating more of a platform teams and more of a DevOps model. Mm. So that's, that's more of it, yeah. OK, OK. So Cedric, uh, if you take BFSI domain, and we have worked with several BFSI customers and so on, uh, BFSI is full of security compliance, all the other concerns and so on. So what kind of challenges you encounter uh, when you are navigating in this kind of domain where highly uh, compliance and highly secured, uh, what kind of challenges you had in your digital transformation? That's a complex question. Um, many, of course. So when it comes to BFSI, of course, it includes all financial institutions, but the private banking, it's somehow, um, it has some specificities. 
We're getting the cyber security threats. As a financial institution, we are facing, I would say, the, globally the same threat as every financial institution, um, malware, phishing, um, vulnerabilities, um, internal threat, the, the basics, I would say. Um, but in the compliance, the specificity is that our, inst our company is not itself a bank, per se. Our customers are banks. So our customers need to, of course, follow the regulations. And somehow, because we are also proposing banking services, we need to follow some of the regulations, but sometimes with the, not the same level of intensity as our customers. Still, we, we have to follow it. One of the, the main concerns, I would say, private banking, the specificity of the private banking would be the confidentiality, which means that not in terms of encryption of data and, storage and secure storage, because everybody should do that, more in terms of discretion. It's, we talk about private banking, wealth management, so the, the, the important thing here is to keep things there. We are absolutely not allowed to, 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 to communicate on any uh, customer names, but also our banks itself. Internally, we have three grams to describe the, the customer bank sometimes, so we don't even know for who we are working sometimes. And the, the, the very important is all the, the data that could identify the end user, so in this time the client itself, the, the, the individual. It's extremely important to, that all the journey of the data is really discreet, confidential, and secure. That's one of the main, most, find the main concerns. Okay. Thank you. And Vivek, um, so like take BC Ferries for example, right? When you are doing digital transformations, uh, often there are multiple partners involved and they might have their own systems and so on, right? And like ticketing or tourist uh, or etc. So when you are doing, uh, like you can't independently decide your journey. You have to discuss with the partner. So what kind of challenges involved in project like that? Yeah, like um, talking about the VC ferries, uh, ferry is a totally different uh, domain within the transportation sector, right? So if you compare with the airlines, uh, which are moving only passengers, mm. the bus, train, uh, they, they're moving only passengers. Ferry is not only tied up with the passengers traveling to there, they are moving vehicles also. So the systems uh, out, uh, available in the world uh, as a off the shelf for booking reservation uh, that applies to the airline, maybe other uh, transportation industries, it won't fit in our domain, VC ferries, because we are not, uh, we don't have the like seats reserved uh, available. We, we, we allow passengers, they are cars of different sizes. We have it, uh, multiple DACs there. So we, we don't know when the ferries will be full. We know uh, some sizes, but uh, what cars they bring in, what sizes car bring in at the terminal. So until they are fully loaded, we don't can't say like it's the ferry is full, and that's why like we can't have a reservation system to fully book the like uh, any sailing, right? So it, it's a challenge to find a product uh, booking reservation. For example, uh, there are some uh, uh, available, but we have to tweak that or like extend them to make a fit to the our requirement. So one, one of the challenges to the core business, finding the right product, uh, which is not available. Um, not there, there are not many ferry companies at the large scales uh, that the companies are building software for them. There are few, uh, and uh, finding the right fit is uh, another challenge uh, during the digital transformation. And on adding, adding on uh, that, like when we are going through this, uh, transformation. We are changing the applications. We are changing the, um, the our business processes, right? We, and we have to do in the manner that the customer experience is not affected. Like if they had done the booking, they and they come to the terminal for boarding the ferry. Like it should not be the case. Like they miss out the like we can't find their booking because we our system has changed, right? Uh, so there are a lot of things is, has to happen uh, very carefully. And it has to be a seamless transformation from the customer point of view. Like they should not see what's happening in the background, right? Mm -hmm. um, only uh, one of the major, uh, I think, uh, changes for the customer should be uh, the website, the mobile apps, uh, the media, the, uh, how they're interacting with the, the company. Uh, that has to be more uh, 
uh, including more uh, latest technologies, more interactive and, uh, and simple uh, in, in, in that process. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, uh, like these kind of projects uh, often go for multi years, right? Like a couple of years, maybe four years, five years and so on. There might be so much of changes happening during that particular time. Yeah. Like government might change or technology might change, what not. So how do you plan for such a, a large scale project with a, a multi years of roadmap items and what kind of thought process you had to go through in order to build such a process? Yeah, a uh, lot, lot of effort goes initially in the planning. Uh, if, if we see our, in our case, when we started in 2018 or 19, our systems were built like around 20 years back or something in the house because there were no products available on the market. We still have many applications running on our terminal side which uh, we, are, we have built our own, ourselves, right? So when we took this digital uh, transformation, we definitely had a, like a short-term goals and long-term goals, like two years, five years, 10 years plan in, in, in there, like where we want to reach and what's, what are the uh, things we want to prioritize. This uh, we need to, our booking system was not able to take, for example, uh, new, uh, like flexible uh, options, fair options. So we have to modernize that, we took that. We want to know our customers, so we uh, brought in the CRM in there. Uh, we are doing, bringing these new applications and we need to hook it up together. So we have the SOA and API in, added into there. We modernize the website, we launch the mobile app. So they, these are all part of the planning, like phase-wise, how we want to uh, reach to our goal to the customer experience. And, and the journey is not ended. Like, this is the one part of uh, the transformation we're going through. Um, this is the, just a reservation, how reservation is managed. The next uh, milestone is like improving the experience of the customer at the terminal. How uh, smoothless, uh, uh, sorry, not as smooth, as seamless, um, uh, the customer will be coming up with the booking. Uh, right, right now, like they have to be line up in there, uh, redeeming their booking. So at the self-checkout, uh, maybe we can capture uh, their vehicle number and we automatically scan through AI and let them go without waiting, right? So these are our different thought process we are looking at uh, improving our terminals uh, to uh, improve the customer experience overall. So def definitely it needs a very long-term planning um, and also um, uh, sequentially execution of the application and uh, the projects need to be carried out with the well plan. Yeah, initial, I think uh, more you put in the initially the, your plan out, uh, have a clear vision, I think it's easier to go through that. Okay. The process, yeah. Okay. So, Ashirvat, uh, I guess, I mean, you are coming from a DevOps background and product uh, uh, platform engineering background. So, uh, my question is, uh, like, what kind of strategy you have in your organization, as well as, like, humanitarian uh, domain is also highly uh, kind of uh, compliance and highly secured places, right? Because you are dealing with humans and their data and so on. So what kind of challenges you see when you are designing a platform engineering kind of a process in the organizations in that domain? Yes, that's a very apt question. So humanitarian data that we collect from the fields and other places is quite critical. Irresponsible management of this data can put people and victims in, uh, already vulnerable victims in a place of risk. For example, uh, uh, exposing their data, their location, and the vulnerable IDs, it can cause more harm than any help. So for us, whenever we are building a new system, it's more important that how we are managing this data. In fact, we had a couple of breaches. We also had a couple of attacks. So for us, it's more important how we are creating this system and how we are securing this data that we have. Because for us, it's also important that we share this data with other uh, humanitarian organizations. That's how we can make a more cohesive work in the, in the field. Uh, another issue that we also have while we're building this application is uh, having a standard way and a process of onboarding our new developers. Uh, most of our times, whenever the new developer or somebody who's coming in, they spend most of their time, you know, uh, rather than doing the actual work on code, they spend more time on uh, working on the underlying uh, CI CD templates and instrumentation and other things. So that's how what we plan to do is to build more of a golden path 
which can help these developers to rather putting more efforts in the underlying architecture, or they just work on the code part. Uh, and that's what our goal is, to create multiple, uh, multiple golden paths depending upon what you're using, whether it's a front end or a back end, you provide multiple golden path to each of these developer. And this does not only help the developer, but also helps the SRE teams who are and at the end is going to manage and monitor this application. So that's, that's, what, is, uh, that's what we're doing right now. OK. Uh, but if you take uh, some application, like I was looking at uh, RedSafe, for example, ICRC RedSafe application. This is primary users are the people affected with woe and conflict and disaster and so on. So when you are building applications for those kind of use cases, uh, you can't assume everybody will have an email uh, to log in, uh, or what kind of infrastructure is available and so on. So what kind of planning you had to do when you are building application for those kind of uh, restricted or constrained environments? So um, like I said, these applications are mostly used in uh, conflict zones and in refugee camps. So we do not have the best internet connection or reliable internet connections over there. So for us, it's mostly to make them avail application available in an offline mode. So our developer put more focus on creating an offline functionality, which requires more of uh, data synchronization and caching. So this is how we're trying to mitigate and seeing to it that the application is always available, that the people on the field are always uh, able to support the victims, rather than you know, uh, if they're traveling somewhere and they don't have internet connectivity. So this is one of the main concerns, and most of our applications that we build have this kind of an offline mode where they can continue to support guys. Another issue that we also face is in terms of uh, the hybrid approach that we are taking. So we have certain applications which are on Azure, uh, but in certain areas where we have embargoes, where the US cloud providers don't have access, mm. so we have to provide them a very uh, hybrid approach for these applications and how they access it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll uh, open up uh, for the audience also to ask questions. But uh, before going there, Citric, you, uh, I guess your applications, are, the primary users are other banks, et cetera, right? So it's kind of a business to business applications. And navigating that is self is a challenge when you are trying to convince some other organization to use the applications. There can be technical problems, non-technical problems, political problems, and so on. How do you navigate such an environment? Well, um, there's actually two parts in this question, I would say. Um, as we are a banking provider, the, the technical challenges are, um, let's say, not really challenges for itself because we propose we, we are hosting, we, we are master of the, of the infrastructure. So it was a project driven about three years. So the trans digital transformation came back from mainframe, that came from mainframe to this new open infrastructure. So that was a project. It came with pitfalls and so on. But in the end, what we propose to end user is, let's say, stable and, uh, and, and uh, we basically can deal with all issues coming from it. It's basically a normal infrastructure. Um, the most complicated thing is when we do onboard new customers. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these private banks from outside, they came with their own uh, core banking systems. So they have a like, completely full infrastructure with their own data. And you need to completely migrate those data. And also you need to make sometimes some mapping because the, um, the application they were using from the uh, whole core system are not always aligned with the new application we propose. And somehow, this, this aspect of onboarding the user is quite critical. Um, and it's not really technically spoken an issue, because we, we are the team for that. But it's more organi organizational. We need to, people are here to, OK, we are going to onboard these clients. We need to be sure what kind of data and how are they are formatted, what they are using, to be sure they will fit exactly uh, in the new system, because in the end of the day, after the onboarding, the end user, he needs to have exactly the same services he had before, plus the new one. And this uh, onboarding, this migration of data, is actually something the most challenging, I would say. Mm -hmm. Technically spoken, but from an organizational perspective. Okay. 
Okay, thank you so much, and it's a very interesting talk, and thank you very much for all the feedback, all the comments you have made, excellent comments and excellent uh, contributions. Thank you so much for the panelists. Right? Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.